Welcome to Conversations, Dr. Shiva. It's great to have you here. Um, well, so many questions, I don't even know where to start, but I'd like to start with your mentioning today about and, and expanding on the idea of false climate solutions. Could you speak to that for our listeners? Um, ever since the climate treaty was brought into force, actually the world has been given false climate solutions. The Kyoto Protocol was based on emissions trading. In effect, it was about the polluters continuing to pollute and making money out of it. So we've just had the story of how ArcelorMittal, the biggest steel company of the world, has walked away with one billion pounds in terms of carbon credits. More rights to pollute were allocated than they actually pollute. And if the value of carbon, as they talk in the market language, goes up to the 30 euros that the Europeans are talking about, the one billion will be three billion. Emissions have not come down. They've increased by 16%. The Kyoto Protocol had a target of 5% reduction. Quite clearly, these, the, these instruments are failing. And even while the old instruments are failing, new false solutions are being tabled. The re nuclear energy has reincarnated itself as clean energy. The US and India had a nuclear deal in the name of clean energy solutions. Uh, the entire nuclear obby, lobby is here at COP15 trying to push nuclear as a solution. Coal, knowing very much that fossil fuel are at the heart of the problem, have suddenly called themselves clean, clean coal, coal and are talking about sequestering carbon by putting the carbon dioxide into where they don't know. By 2012 they say they'll have some experimental stations put together. We have had reports from all parts of the world of how suddenly co carbon dioxide building up underground has created huge eruptions, some lakes in Africa, etc. They haven't even looked at the safety of those aspects. You can't continue to burn fossil fuel, generate carbon dioxide beyond the planet's capacity to absorb and think somehow you can take the same earth and bury this waste into her. Other false solutions? Biofuels. The idea that now that fossil fuel is running out, let's turn the food and plants of this planet into running our cars. This is a negative energy solution. It uses more fossil fuel to produce biofuels and it is at the root of the growing hunger crisis because as corn and soya start to get diverted to make biofuel, people won't have food. A new solution that is being tabled is genetically modified crops as a climate solution. Roundup ready crops are known to have created huge damages. They've destroyed biodiversity, they've actually destroyed the ability of the planet to create carbon to return to the soil and yet they're talking about being a conservation tillage system that maximizes carbon return. I've done research on this and carbon is decreasing, not increasing in Roundup ready soils. Um, biochar, another false solution. When the biofuel industry got caught in creating the hunger crisis, they decided, oh, let's turn our waste into the thing we'll sell as a climate solution. The waste out of biofuels is a charcoal. They call it an elegant name called biochar. And then link it to a 10,000-year-old Amazonian civilization that had terra prata. This is not terra prata. This is just charcoal and industrial waste. And I can see if this gets into the negotiations, every industry from the sugar industry to the power industry, the steel industry, will take all its crappy black waste and repackage it as biochar and poison our remaining soils and kill the mm. earth. So we have to be extremely vigilant and I think the time has come to not let solutions rise from corrupt international governments but from people committing themselves to the earth. So let's talk about democracy then, the difference between a corporate democracy and an earth democracy. How do you see that and how do you see it emerging? Well a corporate democracy is no more a democracy. A corporate democracy takes democracies that were supposed to be by the people, for the people, of the people and turns it into dictatorships through the states, by the corporations, of the corporations, for the corporations. In India we witness what this does as steel plants and aluminium plants move to India and are shut down in Europe and America because it's costly to produce steel, it's costly to pay the workers full living wage. Steel workers and metal workers are, after all, some of the best organized labor unions. Escape 
labor unions. The companies are having partnerships, moving to countries like India, but there they've declared a war against the tribals. And as the tribals resist and say, but this land is our ancestral land, the constitution gives us a guarantee that we will be the ones who decide what we do with this land. When the corporations want that land for the mines and the minerals under it, they will then use the paramilitary forces of the state to shoot and kill. A genocide is taking place in India. Most of the world doesn't realize it. A corporate dictatorship based on this limitless greed for the resources of the people must annihilate not just the earth, but the human rights of peasants and indigenous people. And earth democracy recognizes that the earth has her own rights. All species are part of an earth family. And earth democracy has to be practiced on the ground by people in their everyday lives. That practice means that actions are taken in ways that minimize harm. Because local people will never damage themselves. A local person will not contaminate their own water source because they know tomorrow too they have to drink for it. A paper mill can throw its waste into a river. So when responsibility and rights are merged and the very beginning of why we do what we do is inspired by the idea of us being part of this amazing earth family and the relationships we have with all beings, you start to live in different ways.